So welcome to AI Insights with John Rose. Today we're going to talk about AI PCs. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, you've heard of the term, but we want to go a little deeper into, into what they are, how people are using them. Uh, you know, as you know, an AI PC, or hopefully you know, it, it isn't just a PC as it existed in the past. It's a PC that has multiple types of processing elements in it, a central processing unit, a graphics processing unit, a neural processing unit. And, and really why that evolution occurred is because it really is the evolution of optimizing the PC hardware to, in an energy efficient way, be able to run local AI outcomes, specifically some of the modern outcomes tied to large language models, small language models, generative AI, et cetera. Um, we are, I think, now in the, in the consciousness of the, the industry. People know the term. They're starting to think about it. We're seeing pretty good feedback from customers that they're realizing that it is a piece of the overall computing environment. In fact, I would argue that the AI PC, when we think about AI compute, is actually just another piece of the infrastructure. You have compute in the cloud, you have compute in the, your data centers, compute at the edge, and you have absolutely compute on the device. And all of them collectively give you the platform to do most of the advanced AI systems that you're going to deal with. Uh, the good news from a Dell perspective is, you know, we, we're a pretty significant player in the PC world, and and at this point, you know, I think we have emerged as, as really the, the the thought leader and at the front of the AI PC market. So I wanted to invite my friend Mark, uh, who works in our, our CSG CTO division, who's been uh, at the bleeding edge of this for now a while, to join me and and kind of have a conversation. You know, Mark, Mark what, what's you know, what do people need to know about AI PCs? What's what's new? How, what can you share? Yeah, you bet. Thanks, John. Um, and, and as you know, uh, we're kind of in that first generation of AI PCs today. It's been a pretty remarkable year, a little longer than a year maybe that we've had these things in the market. But these things are already starting to benefit users and enterprises today. Uh, some of the core tenets of an AI PC that may be differentiated a little bit of, from uh, cloud-based AI is that, hey, I finally got this device where I can run those workloads there on the device, on those new processing units, the, the NPU kind of being the new kid on the block. Um, data stays local. All my data that's personalized, I maybe I don't want to transit to the cloud or, or distribute that anywhere. I want it there on my device. So that solves a lot of security problems, a lot of privacy problems for us. Uh, and then in not transiting the cloud, as you know, um, that means some cost savings because I'm not consuming tokens per second for that AI model or not storing the data there. I'm not um, maybe um, exposing it to capture and maybe use for training, those types of things. So we're seeing a lot of benefits to the AI PC. Yeah, one of the things I'm, I'm kind of digging into is I, I saw some stats, you know, they were kind of two different worlds. It was, it was the stat of time to first token. Oh, yeah. T -t -t and when you see it in a infrastructure AI system, it can be a couple of seconds. When you see the numbers on an AI PC, it's like milliseconds. Yeah. I mean, and you know, it makes sense. It's the, it's localized. It, you're, you're, and and that that actually does correlate to user experience. That's exactly right. Some of those performance characteristics are, are paramount as well. In addition to all the data security, privacy things, it's really great to have it right there on the system, and it can adapt to you too. Yeah. So you know, um, one of the uh, our favorite applications is RAG. Everybody wants to use a RAG. They want to ingest all of their collateral, their documents, their uh, their PowerPoints. They and, but they want to search through that. They want to summarize it. They want to transcribe it. There's all these things they want to do, and now they can do that right there on their own device. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now, like many technologies, this one kind of emerged out of the out of the architecture world. It yeah. was before we had products. We had this vision of the AI PC. It was mostly driven by silicon diversity, new chipsets coming. Um, we're now this is now real, and you know, is why you know. While it's a new technology, it's real. We, I think there's a good case that, it, and I think we're seeing a pretty good long-term plan that compute's going to be distributed. We're going to need AI compute everywhere. But why now? Why, why should customers think about using these? Uh, there's kind of a myth that there aren't any applications. People don't know what to do with it. Kind yeah. of, let's demystify yeah, that. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Hardware and software has always been that yeah. kind of chicken and egg thing, right? Um, but, but the hardware had to come first. Yep. So we have this first generation of AI PCs that's out there. Um, but, but we're starting to really see the, the software start to develop, right? Um, on, on one side, you kind of have ISVs that are out there. We've got great partners like CrowdStrike who are adopting the NPU use uh, in their security suite, You're seeing phenomenal performance gains at really, really low power so that extends your battery life. Um, we've got all the communication apps. You've got Zoom. You've got Teams with Copilot in it. You probably experienced some of those yourself. Uh, really interesting applications of AI for transcription and things like that that are happening live. Uh, and then we've got productivity apps um, in the creator domain where you're generating video or maybe you're generating images and you're using all the generative AI capabilities right there natively on the device. Yeah, I think... Um I actually 
you know, was surprised. I remember you showed me a list, it was probably four or five months ago, of yeah. I think it was 200 different yeah. ISVs that had, you know, actually delivered, you know, applications that were touching the NPU. Uh, and that's pretty exciting. The other thing that surprised me, and this was very early, when I was kind of getting, when this term materialized, and we started putting in our roadmap, this is going back well over a year, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm an engineer, and I, I, you know, hardware is one piece, software is another piece, the, the, the stack matters. And what surprised me was the kind of orderliness of how the AIPC ecosystem was forming. Like, we know that in the infrastructure side, we have this competition about CUDA and SICL and all these different frameworks that are kind of tied to specific semiconductors. But in the AIPC world, we saw things like Onyx and WebNN and a whole bunch of OpenVINO and a bunch of frameworks show up that kind of everybody was playing nice. They weren't trying to create silos. And I, th I think, I mean, what's your view? Has that helped us move faster? It has. Yeah. It has. Uh, we, we found a lot of that uh, kind of homogenation has been happening with, like you said, uh, frameworks like Onyx and Onyx Runtime. You still have the vertically oriented yeah. segments because sometimes you want to get into performance. I know, yeah. like, especially in, you're in the gaming world or something yeah. like that, it's really, it's all about performance. And we have kind of the vertical stacks with QNN and with OpenVINO and with CUDA and, and Tensor Runtime. Um, but we're also doing things to help that along and yeah. some of that uniformity has helped us do that yeah. as you know we've got a new product out called Dell Pro AI Studio yeah. uh, that really is the way that we realize AI on client uh, and that's been a big boon to leverage some of those underpinning runtimes to be able to support that capability. Yeah what's cool about that is you know while there's the ISVs that deliver kind of a turnkey thing that use these frameworks the real opportunity for an AIPC and an enterprise is thinking about it as kind of the the last step in your compute pipeline and in many cases, you're building, maybe you're deploying uh, an agentic system or you're building some kind of system and you realize, wouldn't it be great if some of this processing could happen close to the, the user? Well, you know, if you don't have any tools to make that happen, it's kind of a great theory, but things like Dell, AI, Dell Pro AI Studio and some of the tools that we're producing actually make it easy for you to kind of think about actually dividing up the work. I mean, you know. absolutely, yeah. That, you're, you're right, because um, your PC, it's really interesting. It's kind of a sensor hub, right? I mean, your keyboard's there, your yeah. mouse is there, but your, your camera, your mics, all of those things, all of your peripherals, and you can adapt and adopt and create really rich context based yeah. on all the telemetry that's coming from those things. Yeah. And then it gets really interesting when you get into hybrid scenarios where now maybe I'm synthesizing something locally, working with something off client right. to be able to do a lot more from an intelligence perspective. Yeah, that, I mean, if you had to bet on what the end end topology looks like, the AI future is not a centralized environment. It's a decentralized distributed environment exactly. because candidly, that's where the data and the users are. No, they're not centralized. They're not in one place. They're, it's a continuum of services and capabilities that need to work together, which kind of brings me to the last topic, which is, hey, this is everything we just talked about was kind of the Gen 1 a a generative AI world, yeah. chatbots, RAG, there's something coming that's a lot more interesting and actually much more disruptive, and that's agentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. agentic's kind of the word of the year, I yeah. think, and and it's really interesting. It, it, it is Gen 1 of these devices, and you can only imagine that they're gonna get better as the software stacks improve, as model efficiency improves, and the pipelines improve, and yep. the hardware to support that all improves, and that's what we're starting to see. And with that hardware improvement, with that software improvement, we are expecting those agents to come down onto the device for yep. a personalized experience, a secure experience. And I can imagine, you know, agents on client working with a whole uh, army of agents off client as well. Right. Yeah, that, that kind of ensemble approach. Now, I've talked about Agentic a lot. And, it, you know, it, look, the real value of an agent is not a singular agent. It's when agents start to work with each other to create composite digital skills. More importantly, when they start to work across domains that, you know, your agent in Dell can work with one of your supplier's agents or can become a new API between you and your suppliers, your customers. The possibilities are kind of endless, but the question is, okay, where do I run them? Do they all have to be captive in a data center on the other side of the world? Or, or is this agent whose sole job is to make my life better, should it be with me? Should it have access to my private information? Should it be under my control? And without things like an AIPC to do that, it's it's pretty problematic to make that kind of experience happen. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think some of our customers are saying that too. Uh, as you know, we have a really diverse customer base. Some of them are all about, hey, the data needs to stay on that device. That device, I, I, I might, I might not want it to be connected. When I do that, how do I take that with me? How do I take that intelligence? It's there, it's available, it's adapted. It's got access to all the information that's there, but it's agentic, right? And so it's sitting there solving problems with me as a companion, uh, helping me throughout my day. 
Yeah, Mark, I mean, I, I, I think it's, it's a, a super exciting technology cycle we're yeah. in, oh, whether yeah. it's AIPCs or, uh, you know, and maybe one last thing that, you know, has happened this year is the AIPC cycle, most people think it's about trending towards highly power efficient mobile devices, but there's another angle to this, which is, you know, at GTC this year, we announced a couple of products that are at the other end of the spectrum, but still PCs. Maybe you can That's talk right. about those. That's yep. right. We've got uh, the GB10 and GB300, Grace Blackwell 10 and 300 in the lineup now. Um, pretty phenomenal devices. Looking forward to seeing them in the hands of data scientists yeah. to, you know, tinker, use kind of as the anvil to hammer out all the goodness that they're going to deploy up into the cloud but also use them as inference devices themselves. Right. Uh, small and medium business can really apply these things and make use of them for a variety of applications. Yeah, when I, when I saw the initial specs for these systems, I, I just yeah, I got very excited phenomenal. because I'm like, oh, I can put a very big model or several very big models into production on that system. I can experiment with them, I can develop on them, but I can also run them. Yeah. And I can do it at extreme performance levels and I can do it in my personal space. I can do it where I want it, in my home, in my office, at an edge node. It, it's, it, it just tells you, you know, I mean, you know, Michael has always said, you know, it's a, a little too early to declare the death of the PC. It, for a, a product that's supposed to be dead several times, uh, no, it has not died. In fact, it's becoming more and more impactful. And in the AI cycle, we're seeing you know, the, the, the it as a platform for AI extend in, in several directions simultaneously. Yeah, uh, again, that hybrid conversation, we, we definitely are thinking about you know the PC world in terms of not just the device itself, yeah. but the ecosystem around the device yeah. and how we can leverage all of those things. And we. It's got a long life to come for sure. Yeah. So, so you know, I mean, the, the discussion, hopefully this is useful to kind of understand the state of, of the AIPC. A couple of takeaways. The first is, look, these technologies are new, but even if you don't build anything yourself, even if you don't have any new AI project in production, which we can have a different discussion, you should have those. Uh, but even if you don't, there are hundreds of ISVs that are actually using these systems to operate in a more power efficient, more effective way. So the technology is very real, whether you see it or not. So having an AI PC just gives you an advantage, but it also sets you up to have a platform to really extend your AI outcomes as you develop them to where the data is, to where the users are. And so and I think, uh, you know, we're an interesting time, but you know, sounds pretty real. Yeah, really exciting. Good. Thanks, Mark. Great. Yeah, Good to see thanks, you. Sean. Appreciate it. Yeah.